Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Here in Louisiana, we have a saying, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And y'all, that could have a double meaning. In every Bayou Village and home we visited, we found one thing to be true. Although all of our dishes taste great, they're not all good for us. So my mission today is to take our time-honored recipes and make them a little healthier for us. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart. All right. How y'all doing? Hello, hello. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? I love that smile right there, huh? How are you doing? Hey, girl. Nice to see you. Hey, guys. Hey, how are y'all, huh? Nice to see you. Hey. That smile right <laughs> Y'all, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to my studio kitchen. It's so nice to have you here today and some of the greatest cooks in Louisiana here in this kitchen today. Let me tell you, I know where all of you live and the best food come within a five-mile area on each side of you, so I've got a great challenge today. <laughs> y'all, let me introduce Glenda Daigle here from Pankerville, Louisiana. Let's give her a... Huh? Well, <laughs> Glenda is the reason, Glenda's the reason we're all here today because she submitted to me a recipe for one of my favorite dishes, wild duck. Of course, as you know, Louisiana is sportsman's paradise, y'all, so wild game is just core to our menus here, especially in the home. And she sent me a wonderful teal duck, pot roasted teal duck recipe. My challenge to try to modify it a little bit so we can take as much of the fats out of it as possible. And y'all, I went to our home, she let me in, thanks, nothing was missing when I <laughs> left, right? And gave me not only a great tour, but the recipe for our famous ducks. And why don't you watch what I learned that day? Boy, did I learn a lot, huh? Look at all the eggs in here. You can pick some of those too. Oh, this is unbelievable. Fre fresh eggs. Now, look, look, look. I hadn't seen this in a little while in anybody's house. Well, y'all at the home of Glenda Daigle in Pankerville, Louisiana, the key word is freshness. Glenda not only picks her eggs fresh from the hen house every morning, but all of her cooking is flavored with fresh herbs right from the garden. Well, that's the way Louisianians think about food. If you have to get it from the grocery store, that's okay, as long as it's not available right out the back door. Those herbs are really fantastic. I mean, nice and, nice and fresh. Mm. Just, and you know, there's nothing like just cooking. I mean, you know, I like to take these, you talk about chopping. I like to just take them and break them, you know, just just rip them like that. You don't even have to chop them because all you're doing is trying to break the oil out of them and just, just throw them right into the dish. Even as a garnish on a finished dish, you're good like that. Those are teal. Now, teal, in your opinion, teal or wood is the best? I prefer teal. Yeah, I do too. I think not. Now, they're pretty similar though, uh, uh, teal uh, and wood. A wood duck's a little bit larger duck, but I really find that, um, and the wood duck cook very, very nice. Yeah. Mallet, or just a little larger, harder to handle. Let me ask you a question. We're riding up and down the bayou here, and the sign is prominently displayed there, Pankerville. Where does the name of the town Pankerville come from? Well, I think the story goes that there was a traveler coming through, and he stopped at a house, and he said he was hungry. And the lady said, I will be glad to feed you, but I have no bread. And he went on to say that he passed through a village that was short of bread. P-A-I-N in French is bread. short of bread. You think that's a true story? I don't know, but it makes a good little story. 
Well, y'all, right over at the stove, Glenda had one of those large Magnolite pots filled with teal duck simmering away with apples and oranges. Let me see how tender they are. Pull one of them up out of there. Let's try this one. Oh, yeah, just pull out. Look, if it breaks, that's good news. <laughs> it's tender. Oh, oh look at here. And you know, that it's interesting because you never know whether it's going to be tender or not. You don't know how old it is. Y'all, the ducks went from the pot to the platter, and I guess you had to be here in the kitchen filled with the aroma of that hot roasted teal to get the true appreciation for this dish. A garnish of herbs, naturally, and then it was time oh, for the taste test. Enough to eat, well, as I said, I <laughs> guess you just had to be there. Uh, mm, mm. Talk about good. You heard that? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know what that is? That's Cajun for wow, this is good. Huh? <laughs> hey, uh, Glenda. Uh, look at here, baby. Look at y'all. She brought me some yard eggs the other day. Rex, eat your heart out, huh? Hey, y'all, look, this is Rex, my main camera guy here. He's trying to get into my egg basket, but keep your hands out of my egg. That's all I can tell you. Hey, nothing like fresh. Now, now, you raise chickens and pick eggs every single day over there. That's, how many people still do that on the bayous, you think, huh? I think more than you realize. I mean, you think do. so? I think people, a lot of people have chickens. You know, we were, uh, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about how in this area of Louisiana, kind of the boot toward the river of Louisiana in the south, people still really like to grow their own food. I mean, you have goats out there, you have chickens, you grow beautiful herb gardens. Uh, hunters come by, your family, I mean, there's hunters in the family. People really like to grow their own food. They like to choose their own food, and they certainly like to cook out of the swamps of Louisiana. That's a unique trait, I think, to our area, isn't it? I think it is. No, I think people really do love good food. Now, I see you have a, is, is he a cook as well as your husband? Uh, I, I, come on, come on, come on. No, I think the closest he came to ever cooking anything, he made a real good batch of kite paste one time. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep him out the kitchen if we uh, can. Hey, I've He's a good cleanup man. Uh, oh, hey, look, I tell you what, every cook needs a cleanup guy. A cleanup and y'all, right across the counter, let me introduce a couple other great folks here. Of course, Tommy Dake, they are your, your son. Nice to, nice to have you. And I was Thank asking you, you were, you a, were you a cook or a, or a hunter? You say a little bit of each, huh? So. Yeah, a little bit. And then Gloria Graham here, y'all, uh, wife and very uh, good, uh, wife of my very good friend, Mike Graham. I cook with Mike every Tuesday and Thursday. Nice to have you here as well. I'm going to be passing things through the counter here. Uh, Rex, look, take a look at my board here, y'all. We're cooking wild ducks today because I was challenged with the ducks. Now, this right here is a little bitty wood duck. This is a little wild wood duck. I think wood and teal are probably the best ducks, right, uh, 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 Glenda? I think so. I, I really think so, too. But since most people can't have uh, uh, these at their home around the country, uh, you can also go to the store and get the Long Island duck, just like this, and cook it in the same fashion as the wild. And right up here, another one of the wild species of Louisiana, this is the wild goose. And of course, a hunter brought this to me. And the main difference between the wild varieties and this, y'all, fat. You see this? fat. When you're using these Long Island ducks or domesticated ducks, there's a lot of fat. The wild ducks have to fend for themselves. So a lot of fat in these ducks. Now let me show you how I prepare them. First of all, a little salt, a little pepper, a little granulated garlic right on the duck like this, inside and out. And y'all put a lot of seasoning inside the duck. Now Rex, I'm going to throw a carrot in here. Oh, you have to stuff good stuff inside the duck. A little orange. I'll, I'll put apples in there too, but a little orange is a nice, and then after they're totally seasoned, I dust them in just a little bit flour to coat them well because that will protect the duck during cooking. And let me show you what they look like, Rex, over here in the pot. Take a look down in there because they are just beautiful. I've been sauteing them down in there. Oh, yeah, y'all, huh? Huh? Hey, uh, Glenda, tell me something. Look at those ducks. <laughs> hey, Glenda, those are great, great ducks here, huh? Now, let me tell you the difference between, now how do you start sauteing yours? What do you put in that pot to saute it to brown? I use a, a low, I mean, a, just a regular cooking oil. Just a regular uh, cooking oil. Well, let me tell you what oil. I did. I started, because I, I've got a decreased fat here, y'all, turkey bacon. In Louisiana, we love smoke in our cooking, so I'm going to use, I've rendered a little bit of the fat in, of the turkey bacon, and I'm gonna, I've rendered it down in there, and that's the fat, about two tablespoons, 
that I'm using in this particular dish. Now, once the ducks were seasoned and slowly browned, you want to slowly brown wild game. Don't rush it, y'all. Just kind of take your time, and I browned them on all sides. Now I'm going to put all my flavors in. Now, you used oranges, right? Now, all fruit, though, right? I, I use apples, oranges. In the duck, I'll stuff the duck with um, celery, onions, bell pepper, and a slice of apple. Right inside? Inside the duck. In. And then outside, I'll do the Holy Trinity, you know, the bell pepper, onions, and celery. Ah, the Holy Trinity. Well, let me start baptizing <laughs> these ducks. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mike, I'm baptizing these ducks right here. <laughs> Huh? Onion, celery, y'all. How did he get the name Holy Trinity? I don't know. <laughs> I know why they're omnipresent in our cooking, huh? Uh, don't you think? I mean, we have a tendency to worship food, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, now, that's probably even more, uh, more the reason we worship food here, y'all. Now, I'm putting in my oranges, my onions, my celery, my bell pepper. Now, you put a lot of garlic, too, right? Yes, I use garlic also. A, a lot of garlic. Yes, a lot of garlic. Oh, yeah, y'all, a lot, a lot of garlic. Uh -huh. Yes. Some, some for you, some for Will, some for Tommy, some for Gloria. Huh? Hey, oh, yeah, put it all in there, y'all. Now, uh, you see what I'm doing? I'm cutting back fat, but, y'all, I'm piling on the good stuff. Let me tell you what, whenever you reduce any fats in your pot, all I'm trying to do is take as much of the bad stuff out and put as much of the good stuff in. That's the important thing. The turkey bacon is going to give us all the flavors we want in this pot, even though I took out two or three or four tablespoons, probably about a half a cup of fat. The fact that I use turkey bacon, uh, half of the vegetable oil, I just put a little bit in there, and I'm going to put a little defatted stock. I've cut the fat 55% in this dish. So the difference between your ducks and mine about half the fat. That's right. Thank you all, huh? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> half the fat. Now you have an option. You can eat my ducks and stay nice and lean. I'll go to her ducks and all. Oh. I'm just kidding. Hey, look, let me tell you, I ate her ducks. I don't mind getting fat on her ducks, huh? Okay, y'all, now with this, I'm going to put in a little orange juice. You put orange juice in yours. Oh, yeah. Look, I tell you, I never had a cold since I started eating these ducks, huh? A little red wine. Ah, y'all, yeah, huh? And I tell you what, make sure it's good wine. You know what I mean? They don't put uh, cheap wine in here. Huh? Put the good I always cook ducks with the wine. I'm going to actually serve at the table, y'all. And uh, now what about duck varieties? Let's talk about that. I, you said teal. I said wood. But wood and teal are about the two wild varieties that's the best. Now, mallards are pretty good, too, right? Mallards are, I think the main thing are the cleaning of the ducks and to... Um, marinate them before you cook them. Now, how do you marinate them? I'll just take all of my ducks after they're clean, well clean, and I usually fill the sink with hottest water that I can fill. Right. And I'll add a half a bottle of red wine vinegar. Well, hold on. You can stop right there. You don't need to do nothing else, huh? <laughs> I'll have a bottle of red wine vinegar. Go ahead. All right. And I'll let them sit. And you'll notice that it plumps the duck. Yeah. And it'll bring a coating of oil to the top of the water. And you'll see that it draws the duck a lot, and it plumps the duck. Yeah, it plumps it up with that duck. Then I rinse them in cold water, drain them upside down, because you want them well drained. You don't want that in the pot with the water getting into the oil. And, uh, and that's the start I, of it. That's right? the start of it. Well, I tell you, with all the great flavors we have here, y'all, I'm going to end up with a little cayenne pepper. Now, how much spice you put in a pot? Well, it's up to you. Everybody's individual. I'll say season for taste. So I'm putting a little cayenne pepper. I'm going to put a dash of hot sauce. Mm. Just a little bit. Oh, yeah, now. Nah. Huh? Well, hey, I'm making it a little fat, huh? <laughs> and then, y'all, a little salt substitute right here as well. Salt substitute in it. Now, when using salt substitute, y'all, it's very good. But remember, season the ducks after with a little salt substitute as well because it'll bring the salt to the top. Now, y'all, I would either put a lid on this and pot roast it on the stove, as I'm doing here, or I can put a lid on it, put it in a 375 degree oven for about two hours, two and a half, three hours. The thing with wild duck, you never know how old it is. You've never, you don't know how, what it eats. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that uh, you cook them long enough. And uh, some may be cooked before others in the pot, too. Take a look at Glenda's here. She brought me some all ready to go here. Y'all ready? This is Glenda's ducks. Uh, <laughs> Bat, 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 bat. Oh, delicious. <laughs> now, y'all, take a look at these 
nice, lean, flavorful ducks. No, but not, not, not. Look, these, these are actually wood ducks, y'all. You see, they're a little bit big. I cooked them for about three and a half hours. It took, and I'm serving them on rice. And look, look at the caramelized vegetables, the apples and the oranges around it. I took that right out of the pot. It has all that great flavor, and the ducks absorbed it. Now, look what I did here, uh, Rex. Take a look at that nice duck. That is a Long Island duck right there. And that Long Island duck cooked for about, oh, probably a, an hour and a half to two hours, and I browned it, but I cooked it with the same flavors as the wild duck. Look at the difference, y'all. Rex, take a look at that carafe. Take a look at that carafe. That is the fat that I took off of the Long Island duck in addition to the fat. Let's turn that toward, uh, I gotta turn that toward Glenda. Uh, uh, Share that toward Glenda over there, that carafe right there. Ah, there you go. Uh, no. But that's what you want to do if you cook Long Island duck. Take skin the fat, y'all. That's all you have to do. Isn't that fantastic and gorgeous? Glenda, I'm kidding you. Your ducks are fabulous. <laughs> okay, y'all, with that. Now, I would normally let Gloria, you would normally have to cut, carve, and serve these ducks. But I'm going to carve them and serve them later because uh, this is like uh, the Sermon on the Mount. I have to ma make this go to about 75 people, these three ducks. <laughs> all right, y'all, with that being done, y'all ready for my next dish? Oh, I tell you, um, absolutely. <laughs> Y'all, one of the most fan you've heard of tadalabui, right? Everybody heard yeah. of tadalabui? Yeah. The boiled custard tart of Louisiana. Bui, tadalabui. Bui is boiled, tart, of course. And it's the oldest recipe for desserts in Louisiana because custard-based desserts are just fantastic. You know why? Right here, y'all. Eggs. We had a lot of eggs in Louisiana, a lot of milk. Everybody had cows. So what did you make for dessert? And we're the sugar state. Sugar state. So if you lived near the cane fields, the sugar cane fields, you had your cows, you made a lot of... Now let me show you how we made make the, uh, the custard. You ready, Rex? In my little pot here, I'm going to start with a little bit skim milk. Now normally with the boiled custard tart, you start with heavy whipping cream, 40%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, you can take a bath in it, huh? <laughs> now, I'm going to put my skim milk in here now. Look at here, Glenda. This is evaporated skim milk. This is the thick cream version, no fat, of course. And I'm going to put it right down in here. And this is going to give the boiled custard a cream texture, which is very important. Next to that, y'all, I'm going to put in egg substitute. Now, every yolk of egg in that basket has five, <coughs> five grams of fat. I'm going to use the egg white that is colored with yellow food coloring. It looks like egg yolk. Nobody will know the difference. I add it in there like that, swirl it around, and it'll give the custard that nice uh, look, that really nice yellow look. Now into that sugar. Oh, yeah, where the sugar stayed, I told you. <laughs> swirl that around in there. Now I'm going to put cornstarch. This is the thickening agent. A half a cup of cornstarch in there and swirl that around and just blend it in. And then, y'all, I can add just a little touch. Y'all want to put some vanilla in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I make my own vanilla. Oh, yeah. I make my own vanilla. You can steep vanilla beans in any bourbon or brandy, y'all. And I'm going to put in a teaspoon. <laughs> A teaspoon, okay, uh, not quite a teaspoon, all right. Uh, now, y'all, I would let this come to a rolling boil. As it rolls, the cornstarch will thicken it, as you well know. So I'm going to let this just sit here and cook for a second. And, oh, yeah, Rex, oh, can you smell that? I can even put a little, I can even put a little cinnamon and nutmeg in here, but, y'all, I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. Why? The Cajuns on the bayous of Louisiana didn't have access to a lot of spice. So they had to make things very simply. And in this custard right here, since I'm using the evaporated skim milk, I'm using, of course, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the regular skim milk, I'm cutting the fats from using the cream about 66% in this recipe right here. So I'm going to let that cook. Now, Rex, let's make the pie crust. You ready? Oh, tadalabui pie crust, y'all. This is a difficult pie crust. Why? It's full of sugar. Sugar and light margarine makes this a very soft, pie crust that gives you a lot of trouble. You have to work with it cold. So I'm going to take my flour and my uh, light margarine. Light margarine is basically uh, just 50% water, 50%
margarine. So you want to blend them together. And uh, when cooking with light margarine, you want to remember, you put in the hot skillet, the water will evaporate. You'll have 50% of what you started with. But it's still lighter, OK? So with that, now, uh, Rex, a little sugar. Remember, y'all, the sugar stays. Oh, I tell you, a lot of sugar. Now you know why this pie crust is hard to deal with. A little bit baking powder, because it's got to be very nice and light. Oh, I tell you, every home made this dessert, didn't they, Glenn? Every one of them. Look at that. Look at that. What do you have in front of you there? You're distracting me. <laughs> huh? Tell me about that. What is that? Huh? Well, it's a dessert that I make, and um, I really don't know what to call it. It's a butter cake that I make, and when it's hot, it's important that it's hot, you punch holes in it with right. a wooden spoon, the base of a wooden spoon, and I make a coconut filling to go on top. After that's done, I'll let it sit, usually for several hours, because for some reason, time, it develops a better flavor. After it's cool, I make a custard, an egg custard, with six egg yolks, yeah. five grams of fat in each one, and um, I'll make a cooked custard. So, so I like the chocolate So it's a cake layer, and then you have a custard on top of a it. A coconut, and then, you, and then a custard. Then you pile up. A meringue. meringue. And yeah, look, y'all, I, all I want to say is this. I'm going to have a private lesson in meringue making <laughs> after this show. Give her a hand. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right, y'all, into this, I added a little bit vanilla. Two tablespoons this time. <laughs> uh, add a little egg substitute into the uh, pie filling here again, y'all. Now I'm going to swirl this around, and my dough will come together very quickly. You can see how it's coming together very quickly in here, y'all. Oh, that's it. Now, look at this dough. You see how sugary it is? See how sugary it sticks to your fingers? If you don't put that in the refrigerator, you will never roll this crust. And with that being said right there, I want to show you what we do. After it's rolled out, Rex, we put it right here in this nice pie thing right there. See that? Now, once the custard is done, y'all, you have to chill it. You see this here? Oh, Glenda, look at here. Low fat, baby. Low fat, baby. Hey, you can eat as much of this as you want. Right there. Huh? Ah, oh, I can pass that. OK, uh, come on, Rex. Huh? Now y'all just uh, smooth it around. Now, in the old days, we would leave enough of the, of the uh, uh, crust hang over the side of the pie so we could fold it back over the edges into the middle of the pie. Or you could put lattice work across it. What a beautiful, oh, I'll tell you. Oh, Mike, should I? <laughs> uh, I can't do it. Now, y'all, let me show you what it looks like when it's all done. Rex, look right to the left of you right there. You don't have to kneel and worship that pie. Uh, take, take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? Okay, y'all, now what would I serve with all of this? First of all, look at that depression glass. Oh, y'all, I got to talk about that. Rex, get a shot. Uh, you're a great collector of depression glass and carnival glass. Some of the most beautiful stuff I've ever seen at your home is fantastic. Anyway, I'm also, I want to serve my custard in that little bowl right there in a minute. Look at a couple of dishes, y'all, I'd serve with this. Uh, 1910 rice salad, y'all. This is made with light turkey sausage. I boil egg whites. I take the yolk out and chop it. A little water-packed olives, of course, onions and celery and bell pepper. I put shrimp in it, y'all. <laughs> shrimp in it, 66% less fat. I, and I don't put any mayonnaise in it, I put Creole mustard. Right next oh. to it, y'all, a beautiful marinated shrimp and artichoke salad. Take a look at that, Gloria, it's fantastic. Oh. Olive oil, y'all, just about half olive. I, I put about half of the olive oil I would normally put in mayonnaise. I put capers to give it that nice spice. Creole mustard, I can put any seafood over the artichokes, but I'm using shrimp again. I've cut the fat in here 50%, but remember, you can use crab meat in here. Oh, any kind of crab meat. You can put crawfish in here, y'all. It would be just fantastic. Both great salads to go with the wild duck, to go with this gorgeous duck here, to go with the tatalabui. Oh, I tell you what, Gloria, Gloria, you ready? Take a bite of that, baby. Take a bite of that. Y'all, who says mama's cooking can't be healthy, huh? <laughs> hey, I tell you what. Y'all have been wonderful. I'm going to serve every single one of you that food, but first, give me my dessert. Give me my dessert. Give me my dessert, please. Oh, Y'all, hey, take a look at that bad boy right there. Baby, you're, hey, you're beautiful. Give her a hand, y'all. <laughs>
Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and believe different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Something old and something new. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $29.95. This companion book to the television series features over 150 recipes. To order, please call 1-800-973-7246 or send check or money order to the address shown on your screen. A Taste of Louisiana, Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $19.95. This VHS video contains one episode of Chef John Fultz's new television series. Please send check or money order to the address on your screen and mention the show number with your order.